guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Shamira. I would love for you guys to subscribe down below. I make all types of videos about college, my lifestyle, beauty, and fashion. So be sure to join the fam and give this video a big thumbs up. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my fitness tips and tricks and my weight loss journey. So this is probably one of the most highly requested videos from um, my friends and family and just people I know or follow on social media. Everyone wants to know how I did it, why I did it, and they also want me to help them do it. So I'm really excited to make this video to kind of share my story and my background with you guys as well as to help you guys kickstart your journey and make a better lifestyle choice. So let's go ahead and jump right into this video. So I've written down here on my phone about 10 tips and tricks that I um, really lived by during my journey, but I want to start off by giving you guys some background information about my journey. So I've always kind of been overweight um, as a child during my childhood. Um, I really started to gain weight when I was in middle school. I would say about 7th or 8th grade is when I really started to pick up those pounds and then definitely my freshman year of high school is when I gained the most weight. I was the heaviest that I had ever been. Um, I'm very very short. I'm about 5 foot, 5 foot 1. So any weight, extra weight that I was carrying really, really shows on my stature just because of how short I am. So I've always kind of been the chubbier kid, the chubbier teenager or whatever. Um, when I was younger, I was not very overweight, but just because of how short I've been my entire life, I appeared to be chubby just because of my you know height so that's kind of how um, my childhood went as far as my weight um, and definitely in high school I was very very overweight um, I would go to my doctor's appointments and they would tell me here and there you know maybe we can get you a nutritionist maybe we can get you a dietitian and you know they can help you out to kind of get rid of a few of these extra pounds and, you know, I never really went through with it. I always thought about it, but I just never committed to losing the weight when I was in high school. Well, at least freshman through um, junior year, I never really committed to it. I was content with the way I was. I never really was very insecure about my weight. Um, of course, I didn't like being overweight, and I wish that, you know, maybe I was as small as most of my friends were, but I never really beat myself up about it. I wasn't depressed about it or anything like that, so it didn't truly bother me. Um, but when senior year rolled around, I knew that I wanted to make a change before I went to college and met a bunch of new people, and I just really didn't feel that great. I started to feel, you know, very heavy, and I was sluggish, and I wasn't extremely active. Um, I've always been a cheerleader, but I just that wasn't enough for me. I needed to be doing more and I simply wasn't. Um, I was eating out a lot even though my mom would cook. Every day after school I would drive to Chick-fil-A or Wendy's or Chipotle with my friends somewhere. We were always eating out. And then on the weekends my family we normally eat out so I was eating out with them of course. So I just wasn't eating healthy by any means and it was really catching up to me mentally and physically. So when I started my weight loss journey I was 220 pounds and remind you I'm five foot five foot one and about you know a couple of months before I started my weight loss journey I did try to lose some weight and I did I lost about eight pounds but I did not stick to it and I gained those eight pounds right back. So um, I started my weight loss journey for good um, at the beginning of 2017 it was my New Year's resolution I wrote it down in paper and I committed to it so that's you know where I started with my weight loss journey I was 220 pounds and now I'm about a year and a half into my journey and yeah I am now proud to say that I am weighing in at about 134 
pounds. So I have lost over 80 pounds, which is insane to say. And I'm only four pounds away from my initial goal weight that I set when I wrote that goal down on pen and paper for my New Year's resolution. So I'm very proud and very excited. Um, I'm at a really good place right now. I'm really, really happy. I'm more so maintaining the weight than losing the weight right now. But yes, I'm very proud and this is not to brag or boast or make you guys feel bad about wherever you're at in your weight loss journey. I'm just trying to give you guys a gauge on you know how much weight I've lost and where I'm at right now and yeah so now I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys the tips and tricks of how I got to where I am right now so guys the first tip is going to be to do it for yourself I cannot stress this enough because so many people start their weight loss journey because other people have called them fat or made fun of them or they were bullied or you know their doctors have said they need to lose weight and while all these reasons I totally understand why it would make you want to kickstart your journey it's just simply not enough to maintain the journey and you know I've been there before um, when I first started my first ever attempt at losing weight I started it because people were telling me that I needed to lose weight not because I truly wanted to make that change and that makes the world of a difference I quit after about three weeks of going to the gym and eating healthy and I didn't get anywhere at all I just gained the weight back because I was doing it to make other people happy not because I wanted to make myself happy so when I started the journey um, at the beginning of 2017, I made that choice on my own. No one told me that I needed to do it. No one pressured me into doing it. I did it simply because I wanted to do it. And I think that was really what clicked in my brain is that I'm doing this for me. And I'm not letting down anybody else but myself if I don't stick to this. And I stuck to it and that's what really, really worked for me is that I was simply doing it for myself. Tip number two is going to be commit to eating better foods. I cannot tell you enough that your diet, the way you eat, is the biggest part of your weight loss journey. So many people try to say that, oh, I'm going to eat whatever I want as long as it's in my calorie range, but I'm just going to kill myself in the gym and work out two hours a day, seven days a week. And while, yes, that might work for you, but it's not sustainable. You're not really going to maintain that weight loss by working off a bad diet. I think I saw somewhere that it said that your diet is about 80% of your weight loss and working out is 20%. So it's really, 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 really important that if you want to make a change in your body and in your lifestyle that you commit to eating better foods. Um, I went cold turkey for the first three months. I cut out soda, I cut out juices, I cut out um, fast food, eating out, any, you know, like added sugars, um, dairy, and red meat. I cut those out completely for about the first three to four months of my journey just because I knew that I had to go in strong headed to really kickstart my weight loss. So that worked out best for me but if you know going cold turkey doesn't seem like it would work out for you then just progressively cut off some of those bad habits and some of those bad foods and you will eventually get to the point where you don't even crave those things anymore and you just don't want to eat them. I haven't had a soda or anything like that in literally over a year and a half. I just don't even, soda just doesn't even sound appetizing to me anymore. That's just how I did it, but some people do find that progressively cutting out those bad foods works great for them, and it really is about finding a balance and just doing what works for you. Number three is going to be to get in the gym. Um, this was kind of the hardest part about me because I'm so picky with eating that really cutting out all those things didn't really, you know, affect me that much. Um, but getting into the gym was really hard because gym intimidation is really a thing and 
I was just always a little bit nervous to go to the gym just because I didn't know what I was going to do for sure and I was scared that people were going to look at me but you know that's all in your head no one's looking at you they're all trying to do exactly what you're doing and that is to better their life and to better their health so don't worry about what other people are saying or what people might think of you it's all in your head and just get to the gym and once you get to the gym it's very helpful to know what you're going to do when you get there so maybe plan out today i'm going to do this 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 and tomorrow i'm going to do this 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 just so that when you go there you have a game plan and you're not wasting time or lollygagging around and just really unsure of what the heck you're doing um, because that does happen and then you've realized you've wasted time because you didn't really give it your all just because you were trying to figure out what to do before you even really got to get into your workout. Tip number four, if working out alone is scary, find a partner. Um, I had a partner um, that I would go to the gym with every couple of days and that really motivated me to get to the gym because I knew that I committed to working out with my partner and I couldn't really leave her hanging and I just didn't want to be that person to just back out of my plans. So it made me go to the gym. Also, it really takes away from a bit of that intimidation because you are with someone and so you're not as scared or as nervous. And then you guys can share ideas of what to do in the gym and different workouts and things like that. So it really does spice up your workout and make it a little more fun. If that's what you need, then give that a try. My next tip is going to be to choose a workout that works for you. And also make sure that that workout is going to be challenging and it's going to push you to reach your goals. So I, when I first started off, I did about 45 minutes to an hour of cardio. So by cardio, I don't mean that I was killing myself on the treadmill for 45 minutes running because I could not even run for 45 seconds when I first started my journey. So I would do um, walking at an incline. That helps a bunch. Don't just get on the treadmill and blatantly walk at a speed of about 3 to 3.5 um, with your incline at zero because you're not really going to benefit from that very much at all but if your incline is kicked up and you're going at that 3 3.5 speed then you will really burn calories and it's super super beneficial I loved that I would watch a video or Netflix or just jam out to some music for a good 45 minutes to an hour and that worked for me so much and I also did incorporate running because I did enjoy running I just was not good at it and I had no endurance so I worked up to that and now I do run for about 30 minutes I do about three to four miles um, sometimes five if I'm feeling crazy in about that 30 minute span and I also incorporate HIIT workouts because those are amazing so just you know do your research find a workout that works out for you but you want it to be really challenging and something that's going to push you and allow you to meet your goals my next tip is to stay focused and this is really really important because it's so easy to fall off because you know you're with your family or you're with your friends that are not on the same journey as you so it's just so easy to get wrapped up into what they're doing and want to eat what they're eating and want to skip out in the gym but you have to stay focused and some tips I have for this are meal prepping meal prepping meal prepping this helped me so much for about the first six months um, I meal prepped hardcore every Sunday I meal prepped my lunch and dinner um, I was still in high school so for breakfast I would just have something really quick like oatmeal or um, like an apple or something like that and then I had lunch and for lunch I would have like um, maybe a sandwich on lettuce no bun um, I would have you know some vegetables like broccoli and carrots um, things like that and then for dinner I would do like maybe baked chicken with a sweet potato and roasted vegetables or salmon or ground turkey different variations of those um, meats and sides is what I would meal prep for about the first six months and then I stopped meal prepping because I went to college um, but definitely meal prepping is the biggest 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 help to staying focused with your eating and then to stay focused with working out just make yourself a schedule incorporate it into your routine because then you won't really have 
a reason to skip out on it. For me, I knew that if it was written down in my planner or if it was something that I did every day, then I just had to continue doing it and that helped a bunch. My next tip is going to be to choose a sustainable lifestyle. So when I say this, I mean to choose something, a diet in particular, that works for you. Um, if you know that you can't sustain the low carb, high fat, no sugar diet known as keto, then don't try that. Um, if you know that South Beach diet is only going to work for you, for you for about a month, then don't do that. If you know that Weight Watchers is only going to work for a couple of weeks, then don't do that. Really stick to something that is going to help you and that's going to really stay with you for the rest of your lifetime. My next tip is that you shouldn't beat yourself up and don't compare yourself to other people. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You are going to take weeks or even months to see the slightest bit of progress just because we see ourselves every single day. So it's really hard to tell that we've lost five pounds when we've been looking at ourselves in the mirror since we were born, you know? So it's really hard, um, but take those progress pictures. Don't get on the scale every single day because it's not going to move every single day. So don't beat yourself up and know that you will get to the point that you want to get to but you have to give yourself time. And my last tip is going to be to set goals. So if you go into this journey, you know, just going into it and you don't really know where you want to end up at, you know, chances are you're probably going to quit just because you're working towards nothing. So give yourself a goal. When I first started, my goal was I wanted to be 130 pounds. I didn't give myself a time limit because, you know, I would get there when I get there and I knew that I wanted to be much more healthier and just have more endurance and feel better and look better. So yes, I did have a number that I wanted to reach, but right now at this point, I'm not really concerned about the number because I love the way my body looks now. Do I wanna to be toner? Of course. Um, do I wanna build more muscle? Do I wanna build more muscle? Of course. So, you know, those are my goals now. Those are what I'm working towards now. And those really help me to stay focused and to stay on track so that I can reach those goals. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you took away some tips and tricks that you guys can use to kickstart your weight loss journey. Let's spark a conversation down below in the comments. If you guys have any specific questions or just need some more advice, leave them down below and I will definitely get back to you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.